Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of what? the Minecraft Manual. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and if you think things are a bit different, uh, you would be right. We've been doing quite a few things on live streams. Uh, so I did this villager breeder on a live stream, and also that iron farm over there on a live stream. This was done on Twitch, because uh, I'm still debating what, where to actually live stream from but anyway we are making progress this villager breeder is kind oh what how the hell did you get out guy what how did you get out shouldn't be able to get out like that though right so this is working anyway we've got villagers here for our trading hall and then up there we've got some iron brewing so we should be all right on resources like hoppers and stuff like that relatively soon hopefully we can get our storage system sorted out uh, this iron farm is pumping out the iron considering uh, so we've got like two stacks two and a half uh, one and a half stacks in there and we've got about another stack and a bit over there as well so in the meantime we have a lot more iron today's episode we're going to be continuing with last episode which was entering the never because i think i've come up with an interesting plan uh may or may not work but we could do with getting end pearls as well so we need to kind of explore the never a bit more than we have okay so instead of going into the never we'll scrap the never part start from here so i think it's probably a good idea to explain villager mechanics before we do anything else so this what i've got here is considered a villager breeder hence why we've got a little baby villager there and don't they look cute uh, so uh, the basic premise of a village is essentially if there are more beds than villagers they will create a baby within a certain radius uh, hence why we've only got two villagers here but we've got more than two beds here this isn't how it originally worked i originally had four in here and then i had the beds outside but i uh, how are you getting out guy as i was saying there needs to be more beds than villagers essentially so what they need is they need food they don't necessarily need a job but in order to get the food you would want to have a farmer villager uh, so a composter is how we get a farmer villager so that is the reason why we've got two composters and two farmers so that they can keep feeding themselves and also uh, well these guys don't need feeding because we're going to transport them but uh, so they can keep feeding themselves to be happy so they want to breed. Another way you can keep them happy is by trading with them as well which is what I had to do with this one actually. This little baby should eventually fall into here because what I had is I had beds here so that the little guy would be drawn to the beds because they like playing with beds but it might have already wanted one of them beds over that. There we go. See? Uh, we could also move these beds over to here a little bit. So that's the basic premise and then when they want to breed we we'll see this. Oh, that I just realised why now. It's that. It's that. That's why you can get out. So we saw the love hearts. And uh, so, and then we get a baby. There he is. <laughs> nice. To trade with any villager, it needs a job. So that means it needs a workstation. I will not specifically go into proper workstations at the moment. Because that needs its whole dedicated vi uh, video to be fair. But suffice to say, we right click on a villager and this will give us its trades so it wants 26 potatoes for an emerald or 22 carrots for an emerald there are other trades we can get get a farmer to do as well but again it needs a dedicated video another thing to notice over here where it says farmer novice this can go all the way up to master and then it increases its trades from there but uh one thing that we do know is that all farmers have a golden carrot trade at some point and that is something that i would like to have let's go on to the iron farm now 
Okay, so we worked on this on the YouTube stream. So this is a um, basic iron farm these days. So what we have is we have a zombie or a mob that will aggro the... Suffice to say there are quite a few other mobs you could use. I've used a husk because one, they don't burn out uh, during the day. And uh, two, I'm in a desert so it's easier for me to get them. It is preferred to get a husk because they do have... A wider aggro range than normal mobs uh normal zombies as well um, and then what we've got either side we've got a four block gap and then we've got three beds and three villagers the villagers are on top of the beds and then this stone around here is just to block them off also these trap doors are quite important because they allow the villagers to see them see the zombie and get scared but they also can sleep so when they're sleeping they can also see the zombie so they have like a little rest and then we've just got a drop pit here this is an homage to the old iron farms it, you don't need a drop pit like this you, you could kill them any other way i just decided to do it this way and uh then you can see the lava just down there and then we've got the collection system with literally just hoppers and chest and that's all we've got that's all she wrote and then on the top we've got water, the spawning platform and then fences around the outside and then fence gates to allow them to drop and that's literally it. Uh, this is a 19 by 22 area and we've just seen one drop, nice. They instantly die down there as well. Uh, you need a bit of moment, you need the golems with a bit of momentum to fall down into the lava. And not float on the lava so if the lava was on this block here they would float on the lava and potentially lose the iron and then down here is a killing pit we've got signs holding up the lava lava on that block signs air gap because the items fall on the bottom of the golems so that's why we can collect them with hoppers and then we've got the iron falling in there we have briefly covered villager breeding and also iron farms it is quite complicated and does really require its own video but i don't really have the patience to be doing that nor can i really explain it in a way that is going to be very valuable for you guys but to suffice to say, all you really need to do is have more beds than villagers and keep them fed, as I've previously explained. And then with the iron golems, you, if you just want an iron golem to appear, just scare a villager or a few villagers with a zombie or something, and that will spawn a zombie. And then from there, you can use that mechanic to build your own farms. Uh, which is what I like to do. Now we can get to work with trading with villagers and this I can kind of help you with. Uh, it is a bit long-winded and complicated so bear with me. What I can show you though is if we come down here. So over here I kind of mined out a bit of sandstone and then I was like I kind of need an area for these villagers to go so I can trade up with them properly. And uh, what better way than down here? So we can make this a little home for them so far. It's probably only going to be temporary until we find a, uh, until we build an actual trading hall for them, which we will do, uh, and then we can sort them out there. But we've also got loads of villagers on this side as well. So we need to connect this rail and have it go around and we also need to get these guys out i've got a rail track sorted i think this should be all right i could have like used this uh you know why do i do that to myself <laughs> anyway uh, so we've got our villagers in a one by one hole so if they reach over 25 they will in fact end up entity cramming and die but I don't think we need to worry about that so to get these guys out normally what we do is we have a powered rail on the corner and then we kind of hope that these villagers are bumping into this corner there and then from there we can craft ourselves a minecart because minecarts are probably the best way to transport villagers. So if we get ourselves a minecart, we can place our minecart down here. That will go, hopefully pick up a villager, 
and then he's going on his merry way to his next home. So we've got this guy in now. We are going to also get a few more villagers in and this will help demonstrate a bit more uh, village mechanics and also their jobs. I have four villagers here safely nestled away in their, let's just call it a home. We, we don't abuse villagers here, promise you that one. Anyway, let's get on to it. Uh, so we want to get these guys trading. So what my favourite trades are, or the most useful should I say, is if we get ourselves a crafting bench, one, we will need a composter. So a composter is for a farmer villager, and basically all you need to do is, if they're in a minecart, it's easier, uh, just place it down right next to them. They should eventually pick up the workstation, however, sometimes, depending on time of day, I don't know if they've changed this or not. They might have not changed this. Uh, they may not, but this guy should be picking up his workstation. Unless someone else has. Uh, anyway, if it doesn't want to uh, get its job, we can always just change it. You want to be a farmer instead. Is that is that how it is that how it's going? Yeah, this guy wanted to be a farmer instead. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you're probably supposed to do this individually uh, and not next to each other, but it serves a point anyway. So now this guy's a farmer. He wants potatoes and beetroot. He's at a novice at the moment. Uh, I have potatoes, but I don't have beetroot. Uh, so we can't really do anything with these guys yet, unfortunately. Uh, but this guy is the farmer. He goes around uh, basically collecting all of the farmland and uh, collecting all the crops on the farmland and giving them all to the villagers so that they've all got something to eat. And then let's move on to my one of my favourite, uh, which we need a smithing table for. So a smithing table is two wood and two iron, like so, my bad. It's four wood and two iron, like so. That will give you a smithing table. And do you want this one, guy? No, you don't. And the tool of cho choice for this one is, of course, an axe. You can see the uh, problems already with working with villagers. Normally, you would do this outside and actually either wait for them to get their job or you would do it separately so that they don't get confused where the uh, stations are. Yay! <laughs> so, another thing is that you could see the green particles there. That indicates that they've uh, they've uh, got their workstation. Uh, so this guy is a toolsmith. He's only gonna uh, he wants a stone. He's gonna sell us a stone shovel or pickaxe for an emerald. Uh, but this guy gets some really good trades once you trade him up. Uh, so this guy, the toolsmith, is what you want with your tools. So he has the potential to give you a diamond pickaxe and also a diamond axe. I'm not sure if he gives you both or just one. He can also give you a hoe as well, I think. So these guys are really quite useful. We finally got a villager to get the <laughs> grindstone. So this guy is a weaponsmith. He sells you weapons, of course, of various scaling so at the moment he's selling me an iron axe and a looting one enchanted sword iron sword which is cool and then obviously you can get him to give you uh, diamond stuff as well uh, so these three are really quite important there's also two more blast furnace is five iron ingots like that furnace in the middle and then two three smooth stone blocks on the bottom this gives us a blast furnace this is good for smelting uh, ores, raw ores like iron and gold. Um, and it's also good for villagers. Like, he took it straight away. Anyway, because uh, this gives us the armorer, which, uh, as you can tell, he gives you armor. So at the moment, he's just given us iron. But eventually, you can also get a full set of diamond armor, which is why we really want to be working on villagers. So there is one more that is crucial to all of this 
and we're going to set him up right here we have the last guy in here one another or another thing to note is that there can only be one villager per working station so you will need to craft a lot of working stations depending on how many villages you want uh which isn't really a problem as long as you can get the resources yeah you guys probably already know why uh because we give this guy a uh, lectern we get librarian villager and these guys if you give you enchanted books uh so normally you'll basically just have like a few of these guys and then the whole kind of like trading hall will be full of villagers for every single enchantment like unbreaking and stuff like that and that's exactly what we're going to do we're not going to have every enchantment but we are going to have like unbreaking free fortune free and so on and so forth all the high ones because you can only really get efficiency five with villagers and mending and a few other good uh enchants with villagers so it's really cool to have these guys around and not just that if you're not happy with their trade say like this guy's only got fortune two you can get rid of their workstation wait until they go back to an unemployed villager plop the village uh workstation down again and then he gets a re-rolled trade again and then we basically just keep doing this until we get the trade we want uh, so he's got efficiency too. We don't really want that. Uh, we can re-roll again. What's he got now? Mending for 24 emeralds. So if we wanted that, we could lock it in. Uh, I don't have any paper at the moment. and I'm, uh, But I'm not really too worried about his trade at the moment either. Uh, so if I really wanted that mending, I would trade with him at 24 paper. Just to lock it in. So once you've traded with a villager. Their trades will then be locked. So that they won't change. Even if you took away their workstation. Uh, so I hope that kind of explains villagers in a nutshell. There is quite a lot more to them. But this kind of at least will help you along the way with vill villager trading. So now I basically need a lot more of these guys. And I think I also need to wait until they breed up a lot more as well. So I'm probably going to spend most of this time AFK and possibly doing a live stream or two where we do some villager trading. Either way, I think I'm going to leave it there for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Mighty High. If you like this video, then please click the like button. And if you really liked it, then click the subscribe button and ding that bell for further uploads. I've been Mighty High. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.